Hey, hey, Lauren here. Let's talk about the Mary Sue problem because the other day, Mary Sue was actually trending on Twitter. And at this point, I am like 99% certain that the world actually, it just, it ended in 2014 or 2015. And ever since then, we've all just been trapped in hell, living in a time loop where we argue about the same things forever and ever. And I'm pretty sure that the whole Mary Sue debate on Twitter was kicked off once more due to this thread. It's by someone named Joshua Lysek, who to be totally honest with you, I'm not familiar with. But the other day he wrote, Ray Galadriel, Captain Marvel, Bo Peep. Why are modern female heroes so unlikable? And what does that mean for us professional writers? It all starts with Mary Sue. Now for a lot of us, even if you don't agree with Joshua that those characters uh, Ray, Galadriel, and Captain Marvel, that they're unlikable. I think most people would probably just shrug at his post and then go on and live their life. But not people on Twitter, apparently, because despite how innocuous that tweet seemed to me, at least, it ended up pissing off a whole bunch of people. And before we go any further, since we are discussing Mary Sue's in this video, it's probably a good idea to go over what a Mary Sue is. Well, according to Wikipedia, and I know that Wikipedia is not a very trustworthy source sometimes, but this is a YouTube video not some academic paper, so let's all just settle down. A Mary Sue is a character archetype in fiction, usually a young woman who is often portrayed as inexplicably competent across all domains, gifted with unique talents or powers, liked or respected by most other characters, unrealistically free of weaknesses, extremely attractive, innately virtuous, and or generally lacking meaningful character flaws. And now if you've ever taken a writing class or you're just really interested in and familiar with storytelling as a craft, the concept of a Mary Sue probably just rubs you the wrong way right off the bat, right? Because so often with stories, the reason why we're interested in and invested in characters, especially main characters, is to see them grow and change over time to overcome obstacles, both external and internal. And since Mary Sue's are generally perfect and lacking in flaws, what that basically means is that they have no internal struggles to overcome because they're already the best that they can be. It just doesn't make for an interesting story. And at this point, some of you may be asking yourselves, well, in that case, why would someone want to write a Mary Sue character in the first place? And heck, even more than that, why would someone in the audience want to watch or read something with a Mary Sue? And here's when the issue of self-insertion and or wish fulfillment comes into play. As I mentioned, usually we tune into stories for things like character development and growth, watching people overcome battles because it's entertaining to see individuals be challenged. But there are people out there, and from my perspective, it's a growing number of people who instead, they turn to stories as a way to imagine themselves or different versions of themselves in exciting scenarios. And so if you look at stories as a means of wish fulfillment or self-insertion, where you imagine yourself as the main character, then the concept of a Mary Sue makes sense because we all want to imagine ourselves as perfect and without flaws and as the center of the universe. And really as people, as writers, activists, and especially critics have increasingly emphasized that stories need to be representative and how we apparently need to be able to see ourselves in stories, I think that mentality has really just encouraged the growth of Mary Sue fiction. Because in many ways, modern day movies, series, and books are not really about just telling interesting stories. No, they're about different ways to represent individuals. So basically, instead of centering interesting character ideas, we are centering the self even in fiction, and that has absolutely contributed to, in my opinion, worse off final products. But anyway, back to Joshua's tweet here, and I'm guessing when he posted it, he had no idea that he would basically be kicking a hornet's nest. But he's asserting that Rey from Star Wars, Galadriel from The Rings of Power, Captain Marvel from Captain Marvel and Bo Peep from Toy Story that they are all Mary Sue's. Now I can't really speak to Bo Peep's character very much because I only saw the Toy Story movie where she kind of like levels up one time and I don't remember it that well. But when it comes to the other three characters, I absolutely agree with Joshua that yes, they are Mary Sue's. I mean, literally for all three of them, the only internal struggle that they go through is having to come to terms with how awesome they are. And basically their external struggles can be boiled down to people not accepting how awesome they are. That is absolutely a Mary Sue premise. And you couple that with the fact that none of those characters also really have any personality to speak of, or at the very least, not a good person 
personality to speak of. And it really does lead to them just kind of being self inserts for female audience members. They're perfectly awesome, but at the same time blank enough where anyone watching them can really imagine themselves as that character. And now I want to get to the rest of Joshua's Twitter thread. But before I do, I want to say a quick shout out to my family's company, Clearly Pure, which makes and sells handmade artisanal bath and body products for both men and women. So you guys may not know this, especially if you are new to this channel, but my mom actually makes these incredible products. We were talking about soaps, bath bombs, body butters, body scrubs, beard bombs, beard oils, fragrances, you name it. And these products that she was just making at home, they were so incredible and so popular with our friends and family that finally she decided to start selling them. You can find her online shop at etsy.com slash shop slash clearly pure naturals. And I will leave the link to that down below in the description. And you'll see that she has so many different scents available for all of her different products. There really is something for everyone. And not to mention with the holidays coming up, there are gift boxes that are already made and gift wrap, which makes shopping for people just so much easier. Or you can also build your own gift set. And again, there are products for both women and men on here. One of our consistently best selling products, and of course a personal favorite is our lavender soap or really just anything lavender scented. So nice, very relaxing. And I also cannot recommend highly enough the mountain fresh soap. Not only does it look like a work of art, but it also it just smells so fresh and clean and apologies, this is one uh, that I've been using because it just, it's consistently one of our favorites for both me and my husband. And the good news is that there is a sale going on where the more you spend, the more you save. For orders over $75, you can use the code SAVE10 to save 10% off. For orders over $100, you can use the code SAVE15 to save 15% off your entire order. And for orders over $150, you can use the code SAVE20 to save 20% off your order. And we also offer free shipping over 30 $5 to anywhere in the US. And if you guys are looking to support these videos while at the same time getting something nice for a friend or family member, or heck, even yourself, hashtag treat yourself, then shopping at Clearly Pure is an awesome way to do that. And a big thank you to everyone who's already placed an order and left a review. It just, it means so much to us that you are enjoying the products as much as we are. Now back to what Joshua was saying. He explains that all four characters are a variation on the Mary Sue trope. A quote, Mary Sue is a female protagonist who can overpower foes with ease, but without the backstory to explain her personality, values, agenda, or those abilities. And attached to this post, what is interesting is a little infographic comparing Rey to other Star Wars characters, specifically Luke and Anakin. As you can see, both Luke and Anakin are flawed characters. Both of them have been embarrassed or failed at a certain point. Luke wasn't instantly like, and Anakin was kind of a mixed bag. And also, obviously, if you're familiar with Star Wars, Anakin went through a really big internal struggle fighting whether he wanted to join the dark side. Contrast this with Rey, however, we don't really understand why she is so powerful. She is perfectly virtuous, but also has no personality, but is simultaneously liked by everybody. And she never gets embarrassed or failed during the films. And so Joshua continues, Mary suing a character is how you botch the hero's journey. In a typical hero's journey, the protagonist is weaker than the villain in every tangible way. That's important when you're considering the odds of who's going to win. But the hero is always set apart from the antagonist by one important quality. The hero does not believe believe the ends justify the means. The antagonist always does believe the ends justify the means. That's the fatal flaw of the antagonist. And that's why we root for the hero. In every timeless story, the hero becomes great by overcoming their tangible weaknesses. Man or woman, doesn't matter. The hero or heroine's journey dictates this change must occur. But Mary Sue, she starts at the end of the hero's journey. We see a character who has completed her arc, but at the start of the story. Ben Solo trains in combat his whole life, Rey is a mechanic. The first time they fight, she slays him. That's not how an antagonist versus protagonist first battle is supposed to go. These Mary Sues are depicted as unlikable, but strong. That's the opposite of how a story should start. Any new protagonist must be introduced in a hero's journey story arc where they're likable, yet have weekly behaviors, or they're dedicated to a sickly extent to their values. I really do agree with everything Joshua is saying here, because think about it. If a character isn't overcoming some sort of challenge, challenge or weakness in the story, then what even is the point of a story? You don't so much have a story in that case as you do a series of events that just kind of happen to someone. It's not really entertaining, not only because there's no change in the character, so you're pretty much watching someone at stasis because they are already the best that they can be, but you're also never really invested in their well-being because you know that no matter what 
comes their way, they're gonna be able to beat it. And not only does that mean that the Mary Sue trope is not interesting, but it's also unrealistic. And I know, oh, well, I mean, Star Wars is about space magic, but you're complaining about Rey being unrealistic. But it's like, yeah, she is unrealistic because nobody is that perfect. Nobody is without any flaws. It's one thing for us as audience members to be transported to an alternate reality where space magic is real, it's another for us to believe that an individual exists who is is so flawless and charismatic and likable, but at the same time human. It just, it doesn't feel like an actual character. But next in his treatise, I guess you could call it, uh, Joshua tackles the Mary Sue. He explains that none of what he has written applies to the Mary Sue. Consider Galadriel from the Rings of Power debacle. She and her elven friends find a troll in one particular scene. The troll starts killing her friends, whom she must have known for hundreds of years, maybe thousands, thousands, and Galadriel waits. She stands back all stoic while her friends are butchered. Then, with little help from her posse, she hops up there and cuts and chops the troll with stupid Hollywood ease. No risk to her, victory without effort, dead friends everywhere. Compare that scene to when the Fellowship of the Ring confronts the cave troll in Mines of Moria. Everybody fights, nobody quits, and only by working together can the weaker heroes defeat the stronger enemy. Working together to defeat a powerful enemy that would otherwise vanquish the heroes, Modern female heroines don't do that. They don't even act like real human beings. No commander in combat holds back and watches as her underlings are crushed by a monster. That doesn't happen unless it's the villain. That's what the villain does, watches and waits, no empathy. And later Joshua continues that your story can only go backwards if you start off with a perfect character. And so the character arc requires the female protagonist to act like the villain. You have to let your friends die when you could have saved them for the plot. What we love about female heroes is their uniquely feminine perspective in addition to their heroism, courage, sacrifice, and empathy. But the Mary Sue, that's all gone. They take everything we love about great women and trash it. And then Joshua goes on to contrast the Mary Sue trope with actually well-written female characters like Princess Leia and Eowyn from Lord of the Rings. And he goes on to ask, what have we learned? That Mary Sue is the antithesis of a real woman and a good person. Her ubiquity in pop culture makes audiences dislike female antagonists in general. Instead of admiring them like we do Princess Leia or Eowyn, we find them unlikable at best. And there is more to Joshua's thread and if you wanna read it in its entirety, you can find it over on his Twitter account. It is still up. But what I thought was just as interesting as his posts were the posts responding to it in a shockingly negative way. Because honestly, whether you agree with Joshua or not that characters like Rey are poorly written, I feel like it'd be a pretty big stretch to call him sexist for his opinion. And yet that's exactly what happened on the internet.com. As this one very liked tweet response read, LOL, the opinions of fragile men aren't fact. These characters are plenty likable if you're not threatened by powerful women whose plot isn't dictated by a man. Similarly, Tater Tots McGee wrote, this is a really long thread just to say that you think the only way women can become strong is through trauma inflicted upon them by men, bruh. Now, if you'll note, uh, Joshua did not say that in any way, shape or form. He did not say that the only way women can become strong is by trauma. He was just saying he would like some sort of explanation as to how women become so strong if entire stories are focused on them. And Tired But Present chimed in saying, you can tweet all of this genuinely believing it to be true and other men will agree. That is truly pathetic. None of you will ever have a fulfilling relationship with a woman if you never even come close to understanding that they are people. And someone named Shaley's take was, at this point, threads like this just make me sad because it reveals to me that men don't see women as people and only see them as valid when they are written to please them. This is incredibly biased and shows deeper issues y'all self-report all the time. So I don't know if those people have some sort of different version of Twitter where it just takes people's posts and drastically rewrites them. But that's really the only way I can wrap my head around those responses being posted to what Joshua had actually written. It's not misogynist or anti-woman to look at a character, a fictional character, and say, okay, it doesn't seem like you have any flaws or weaknesses, therefore I don't see how you can grow in a story. It's not bigoted, hateful, or a rejection of women as people to look at Rey from Star Wars and say, hey, the fact that she was so strong at the start of it, it kind of feels like her main purpose was really just wish fulfillment or self-insertion. And it's funny because as upset as feminists were with Joshua's thread, some of them were also simultaneously confirming it. Because as Mary Sue was trending, someone also posted, I don't want to actually jump into the Mary Sue discourse, but I do want to say that I don't care if she's a Mary Sue. I don't care if a grown man thinks she's a well-written character. I care about this, to which she included pictures of little 
little girls with Ray. And again, this goes back to the idea that the main purpose of storytelling nowadays is just self-representation. It's only a good story if you can see yourself in it. That's why we have to have all of these different diversity quotas. But what these people don't get is that you don't need to share characteristics with a character in order to see yourself as them. I guess it's cute that little girls like Rey and they're dressing up as her, but let's face it, there are also many other characters who aren't women who are actually well-written that little girls also dress up as. And personally, as someone who does have a daughter and was once a little girl, I would way rather look up to a character like Aragorn, who is a man and even though I'm not, just because he actually displays a lot of virtue. He has trials that he overcomes. He doesn't want to be king, but he has to grow into that role instead of just siding with Rey because, oh, she woman, me woman too. In any case, that's pretty much all I have to say about the whole Mary Sue issue. And as always, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you think it's fair to call characters like Captain Marvel, Rey, and Galadriel Mary Sues? Or is that just sexism? And do you think Mary Sue characters are becoming more popular nowadays? And if so, what's behind that? Let me know down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It helps me out so, so much. Until next time.